This is Seven National News and in our top story. The custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz as Saud of Saudi Arabia, has left the UAE on Monday, concluding a two-day official visit. The Saudi king was seen off by the UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, and the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, at the Dubai International Airport. Commenting on the visit of the King of Saudi Arabia, which coincided with the celebrations of the UAE's 45th National Day, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum stated that the visit of the custodian of the two holy mosques is a source of pride for the UAE people, given the strong historical ties that link the two countries. Saudi Arabia and UAE have a common history, geography and destiny, according to a report released by, released by Emirates news agency WAM, and are united by a common outlook and shared principles. The ruler of Dubai also stated that King Salman is leading the Arab world towards becoming a strong, balanced region whose interests are protected, and His Highness praised the important role played by Saudi Arabia in preserving the region's resources and maintaining its development gains despite the challenges it faces and widespread international changes. The memorial site dedicated in honour of the UAE's heroes is now open to the public for the first time. Visitors will now be able to explore Wahat al Karama's more than 46,000 square metres from 9am to 7pm every day, excluding national occasions, special events and visits from official delegations. Twice a day, the memorial will feature guided tours, one at 10am and the other at 5pm, and a ceremony by honour guards from the armed forces in the morning and afternoon. According to local reports, Sheikh Khalifa bin Thanun, the director of the Martyrs Families Affairs Office, said that the recently inaugurated memorial is a national and a cultural landmark that Im immortalizes the sacrifices made by the UAE's heroes. One of the memorial's main features are the 31 towering aluminium clad panels leaning on each other, as well as the memorial plaza's shallow pool reflecting the panels located in the vicinity of the Sheikh Zayed Grand Mosque. Visitors will also be able to read the names of the fallen on the internal wall of the Pavilion of Honour, where they are engraved on aluminium plates made of reclaimed materials from armoured vehicles used in service. Following Wahat al Karama's inauguration on Commemoration Day last Wednesday, which featured the UAE leaders honouring the country's heroes and their attending relatives, the site has been visited by other countries' leaders, including the Yemeni and Egyptian presidents. The UAE will issue laws regulating the space sector within a few months, that's according to senior officials. Dr. Mohammed Nasser Al Ahbabi, the Director General of the UAE Space Agency, was quoted in a local report stating that the laws will facilitate the UAE's ambitious Mars mission in 2020. The Director General also stated that technology alone is not enough for all space related activities and laws are essential to undertake all such projects, adding that the Mars probe cannot be launched without relevant laws. Once technology is available, regulation is an important element. According to officials at the agency, the draft law was ready, which will be submitted for approval of the Council of Ministers soon. The agency announced the policy gives priority to space exploration and related research and development activities, satellite services that will support telecom and navigation sectors, and manufacturing of satellites and related instruments. As Dubai aims to be one of the world's most friendly cities for people with disabilities by 2020, the first annual conference for people with disabilities in Dubai highlighted the need to overcome negative stereotypes about people with special needs while also focusing on ways to empower and establish a fully inclusive society. While talking about how DIWA is working closely with their partners in the government and private sector to empower people with disabilities, officials stated that programs like the My Community, A City for Everyone and their Ashir initiative launched in 2014 were specially aimed at maximizing the participation and involvement of all sections of the community to help build an inclusive society. During the conference, experts dealing with negative stereotypes in mainstream society highlighted that it is important to understand and challenge the definition of disability, as in most cases, people generally don't question the disability but their ability to do things. 
although a lot has been done to ensure that the lives of people with special needs are made easier. Community members highlighted that while creating a disabled-friendly city, the challenges of people with special needs have to be fully understood, as many still encounter regular problems in places like banks, ATMs and various entertainment venues. This is part, first of all, of our strategy. And uh, as you can see today, uh, there are success stories, whether uh, from UAE or outside UAE. I mean, definitely, uh, at the end of this conference, there will be a recommendation uh, will benefit uh, the disability and the handicaps. Uh, they, were, they already started with many initiatives uh, which uh, encourage uh, the handicap to be more proactive and active in the society. And I think you will see more in the future. While stating that one-third of workplaces in our society are still not accessible for people with disabilities, officials highlighted that there is a need to raise awareness in our community to empower and support people with special needs. On the sidelines of the conference, some NGOs and centres helping children with disabilities talked about how disability is projected in our society and why it is crucial to overcome negative stereotypes early. It was also stressed that the involvement of schools and colleges are equally important in raising awareness about the challenges of people with disabilities. Basically, when you want to start to change any communities, you need to raise the awareness. It's very important because you will waste your time if you are thinking that by the law of people with disabilities rights or any other initiatives, you will be able to change the, the society or the communities. No. We figure out or we discover that uh, if you want to change, you need to uh, increase the awareness of the, of the people here in the, in the country. And that's what we are working very hard in terms of uh, having some clear media plan, strategic plan for the future. And uh, by getting into the child in the schools and different uh, also categories in the communities, raising the awareness, so they will be able to read the law and they will be able to implement it in different ways. What we do is that we try to work as much as we can as a transdisciplinary team. Uh, we have a transdisciplinary approach and um, I'm going to explain what it is. It is uh, really so each member of the team, so we have speech therapist, occupational therapist, physiotherapist, the teacher, the assistant teacher, and uh, psychologist and the parents. We always try to involve the parents as much as possible because as you know parents have a very big role in uh, carry, carrying on uh, what we try and teach the children. Um, so uh, we work very much as a transdisciplinary team where each member of the team is aware of what everybody else is doing so that the child is really uh, learning her, his uh, goals all day through with everybody. Uh, and this is how we, achieve, we try to achieve uh, independence for children. Yeah. The UAE is the fourth highest country that reads among the 22 Arab countries surveyed in the Middle East North Africa region. According to the Arab Reading Index released today, the average UAE reader spends 57 hours reading 24 books per year, 18 of them in Arabic language with the remaining eight books in foreign languages. The survey is the brainchild of the Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum Foundation in partnership with the United Nations Development Programme and also aims to measure literacy in the region in order to build upon reading. The index was released at the third annual Knowledge Summit in Dubai, which is hosted by the MBRF. 148,000 respondents were involved in the survey in 22 countries to create a first-of-its-kind database to help countries plan future education, societal and government strategies. In the UAE, 81% of 5,400 survey respondents said they believed reading is an essential need in life, and a further 86% agreed that reading doesn't end with graduation. As many as 76% of UAE respondents said they respect people who read, while 50% said that reading is important in the family. The UAE's high-ranking score of 82 fell in the top quarter of countries in the survey, which was led by Lebanon with 90, followed by Egypt's score of 89, Morocco's 87 and Jordan's 71%. 
And in other news, nearly half of UAE's online shoppers sourced their purchases from overseas vendors in the last 12 months, suggesting that domestic e-commerce operators existing as well as new face competition from international retailers as well. The U.S. was the primary sourcing market globally for local online shoppers, followed by China and India, according to a new survey brought out by the electronic payment service provider PayPal. The report found that UAE shoppers also led the way in buying cross-border through their mobiles. On average, 40% of transactions were made on either a smartphone or tablet in the last 12 months. The dominant category at 47% was for overseas purchases related to travel and transport choices during the 12-month review period. 40% of the transactions were related to clothing, footwear and accessories. In terms of so sourcing destinations, 16% of UAE's online shoppers made a purchase from a website in the US, spending an estimated 2.4 billion dirhams. This was followed by India accounting for 13% and China taking in 10%. And finally, in the bulletin, the Emirates Airline Dubai Jazz Festival has confirmed that award-winning singer, songwriter and record producer Mariah Carey will be performing in Dubai as the headline act for its second night on the 23rd of February. The best-selling female artist of all time, with more than 220 million records sold and 18 number one singles, the most for any solo artist in history, Mariah Carey is a luminous and enduring talent who has enthralled audiences for a quarter of a century. A breathtaking live performer selling out stadiums and arenas around the world, Carey most recently completed her Sweet Sweet Fantasy tour across Europe and second Vegas residency. Excited to come to Dubai, the songstress is poised to captivate her audience with a performance that will surely inspire and awe. The 15th anniversary celebration taking place at the Dubai Media City Amphitheatre from the 22nd to the 24th of February has also recently announced the biggest Latin recording artist in music history, Enrique Iglesias, taking the stage on its final night. Tickets are now available via Ticketmaster.ae and range from 395 to 1,595 dirhams. Festival organizers Chill Out Productions hope that this year's edition will provide something unique and memorable for fans old and new, in addition to attracting more festival goers from beyond the Middle East, all in the name of music.